Hi, everybody. Pastor Doug here. I want to welcome you to another session of the uh, VIP Midweek Bible Study and welcome my uh, ministry partner, Doug Kearns, with me today. And you're going to be flying pretty soon, right? Be flying this evening, today? off to Dublin tonight. Oh, wow. Dublin. Wow. That's that's pretty cool. Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> no, I'm glad that you could be here. Uh, I was really excited about the, the message we had last Sunday, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And we we're talking about being led by God. And it really struck me, and I used the analogy in the beginning, because, you know, I like to golf and everything, and, and anybody who has, knows anything about golfing knows that Tiger Woods is like the best golfer ever, uh, arguably, uh, just by based on what he's accomplished. But what was intriguing to me is that even somebody that's uh, performing at that kind of skill level still felt like I could get better. I, ne I needed to do more. And I was really thinking about the lives that we have and how God has created us with skills and abilities, and he's planned for us to use those skills and abilities to, to our best of, of what we can possibly perform. And then he says, I'll help you. I'll, I'll be there with you. Not only giving you thousands of promises, but a companion, a, a personal coach, if you will, in the, in the form of God to be with you, going every place that you go and facing everything that you face. And, in, uh, for example, on the PGA Tour where Tiger golfs, he is out there. He has his caddy, but he's not allowed to have a coach. The coaches can't communicate with him from any, anywhere. They can't be behind the, the ropes, if you will, and be given signals, hey, do this or try that if, if a golfer's having trouble. They're out there on their own pretty much at that time. But that's not the way our life is. There's never a situation, never a time, never a, a chance that you could be abandoned where you don't have anybody. I know how it is, and I talk about a lot with my brother, Daryl, and how he would protect me and stuff growing up. And, you know, there there were times where Daryl wasn't there, you know, and I'm looking around for now what, you know, when your protector isn't there. But there's never a time that God isn't there. He's always with us, and he wants to help guide you. He wants to direct your path. And that was really the theme of what we were talking about. And I really think, and I said to Doug this morning, I said, I don't think most people realize how valuable it is to have God there in that capacity, willing and interested in helping you. You know, sometimes like I'll get a phone call in the middle of the day and maybe it's one of my children, or maybe Allie or somebody calls and they need something. So they kind of stop you in the middle of your day. This is what they need. And you kind of figure out, OK, I can do this, this there, then, then and I can be there later or I have this going on. Once I'm done that, I'll go. That's never the case for God. God's able to take your call, take your need right in that minute, hear your prayer right when it's happening. In fact, not only that, but already knowing what you're going to ask for, what you're going to need. And it's kind of neat to have a God like that. Would you agree, Doug, that it's sure. that available in your life? Absolutely. Yeah, and you mentioned Sunday about uh, Psalm 119. Mm -hmm. Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the Bible. Lots of verses. Uh, specifically, in verse 105 says, your word is a lamp to guide me and a light for my path. Uh, the question isn't, which path do I take? Well, I guess it is a question, isn't it? Which mm -hmm. path do I take? Uh, you take the right path, the high path, the high road. That's the road that God has highlighted for you. But it's not always the easy road, not always the easiest decision. Later in Psalm 119, verse 133 says, guide my steps by your word, so I will not be overcome by any evil. That's the that's the wrong path. Now that's that's taken uh, maybe the easy way, the shortcut, but it's really the right path to be on. See, what's really a key, that, that when I heard this, it really like turned some lights on inside my head, and there's lots of room in there. But when, when, I, when, I, when I heard that, you know, God is really, really interested in, in dealing with me and helping me and being available to guide me and to show me, you know, we kind of feel like as humans, I think that we get out there and we try to do the best that we can do because that's kind of a natural way to think. Let's, let's do the best we can do with what I've got, but to have that kind of guide and that kind of coach with you at every step, at every moment, it's kind of like take with your finances, you know, and you're sitting at home and you're thinking about, you're looking at your bills that you want to pay or what money you're going to put into savings or if you're able to do investments and have that investment coach right there with you. Oh, oh, 
I wouldn't spend that money on that, Doug, right now. I think I would wait on that. Oh, okay. Having that financial advice or or any advice for any type of help that you might need is just invaluable. And, and here we have the creator of all things. There's no greater authority. There's no greater source for information. There's no greater guidance available in coaching in any capacity. There's nothing that compares with having God as your coach and as your guide. Think about that. You're interacting with people. Here's a God that already knows everything about you, everything you've ever thought, said, or done, knows everything about that person that you're interacting with, everything they've ever thought, said, or done, knows everything that's ever been said about them, everything that's ever been said about you, has all of the information, plus, plus, and this is a big plus, already knows what's coming down the road, knows what you're going to be facing a year from now, knows what you're going to be uh, challenged with uh, next month, all of that stuff. You know, we have jobs, we have ways of, of making money, and, and sometimes those things change. God already knows what's coming down the path. And don't you think, and listen to this promise, I promise to guide you, to lead you, to help you, to show you favor, if you believe in me, and if you live by the values that I've established in my word. That's kind of the deal. That's kind of what's laid out there. So everything with God has a promise with a premise. The premise is you do this, God says, I will do this. And so here you have this package deal that you just can't compare with anything in this world. And that's why I think it might be hard for people to get it because it's just the concept doesn't make sense. Because in human terms, well, you're going to give me five bucks and then I'm going to, we'll do the, we'll wash your car for you. You know, it's kind of like that give and take, but that's not mm -hmm. the way God is. No, <clears throat> and he's always right. Yeah. I could pay some advisor to, to guide me. And he could lead me down the wrong path, maybe intentionally, maybe inadvertently, but it's not always right. Where God is always right. His pathway is clear. And and this is what I, I just think for me, what really opened my eyes up a little bit was, was realizing the full impact of that. Really what's at stake. Your life is at stake. Everybody that you interact with. There's a plan and a purpose behind all that. You know, I laugh. I used to shop a lot at the Giant. Now I, I go more to Redner's now. I'm not sure why. But every time I, I, I leave my vehicle to go into there, I'm thinking, Lord, give me somebody to talk to. Give me somebody to meet. Now, it doesn't work quite as well when you got the mask on because, you know, I'm kind of a hard guy to miss. But but you can't recognize everybody. You know, people aren't as up to visiting and talking and asking what you're doing. But Every interaction that we have, God has a plan behind that. God can use you to reach people in ways that would be remarkable to you. I, I've, I've had this, and I've said this many times to people close to me. A lot of times after church, after the service, we'll be walking back and greeting people. And oftentimes somebody will say, you know, what you said, this really touched me. I felt like you were speaking directly to me. And then you go a little bit further and somebody else might say the same thing, or I get a text or an email or communication card that, that basically says that. And a lot of times, I'll be very, very honest with you, a lot of times they'll say, you know, when you said this, that really touched my heart. And a lot of times I hadn't said that. That's not what I actually said, but that's what God had them hear. I really believe that. So God wants to use you. See, so many times we look at this Christianity and we say, what can it do for me? I want to live in the favor of God. I want the advantages that this can offer me. And that's good and that's okay because that's part of it. That's what God wants to offer you. But at the same time, we need to be looking at what could I do to help someone else? How can I influence the people around me? And we need to start at home. We need to let our children know that we love them, that we care about them, that we they love them where they are. They're not always doing everything perfectly. Who does? You didn't. I didn't. We all make mistakes. We need to tell our spouses that we love them, that we appreciate what they do. You know, I was in a vehicle. You'll remember yesterday we're driving the golf and we were talking about our spouses and how much they do for us and how much we, you know, don't often realize what they do. And one of the gentlemen had recently lost his wife and he was just saying, I had no idea of everything that they do. It's nice to be appreciated. It's nice to be grateful for the things that God has given us. Don't miss this. 
God wants to be your counselor. He wants to be your guide. He wants to be your friend. And that's a big deal. And we need to exercise that in our lives. And we need to realize that that is the case because it's something doesn't matter if you're 30,000 feet above the earth flying across and how fast you going? Uh, about 600 miles an hour. Okay. It doesn't matter how high or how fast you're going. That God is always with you. Do you ever think about that when you're flying that oh, fast, sure. how close you are to God? Sure. Particularly at nighttime when there's no clouds and you can just see just stars beyond, you can't even count the stars, there's so many. And, and that's just a small portion we can see. The, the universe is so huge. It gives me some rough idea of how huge our God really is. Keep things in perspective, I think. Guys, listen, I want to tell you something. I love you. Really glad that you're joining in. And I, and I hope these messages and these little talks that we have uh, mean something to you. I'm going to be sending it out here in just a little bit. But I want you to know that I'm praying for you. Love you. And miss seeing you. Hope to see you soon. God bless you. Thanks, Doug. God bless.